Human threats to species across the globe are staggering. Modern consumption and expansion is so often short-sighted and irresponsible, with little to no regard for the consequences on natural habitats. But with as much capacity as humans have for destruction, we have the same capacity for good. Conservation efforts across the globe are being led by people who love our natural world and want to see it safeguarded for generations to come. Habitats are being restored and protected. Destructive practices are being questioned and set aside. And people are being educated on the importance of caring for the species around us. In today's video, we're going to look at some success stories. We'll visit five species that were once almost gone, but that have made remarkable comebacks. Welcome to All About Nature. On my channel, I try to bring nature-related content that's entertaining and educational. If you like this kind of content, then please consider liking my video, leaving a comment, and even subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate your support. Humpback whales are known for their acrobatic displays and haunting songs. Humpbacks are the sixth largest species on our planet. Despite their size, they feed on tiny ocean creatures like krill or small schooling fish, which they filter out of the water with long, stiff, hair-like structures called baleen. They live throughout the world's oceans and migrate over 8,000 kilometers twice every year. In the warm months, they head to the poles. These cooler waters are high in oxygen and so support vast quantities of food. As winter approaches, they migrate to waters closer to the equator. Despite not having nearly as much to eat, these waters are a safe place to give birth, rear their calves, and mate. During the 18th, 19th, and early 20th centuries, humpback whales had a huge problem. They became the targets of intensive commercial whaling. They were hunted for their blubber, which was used to manufacture soap, leather, cosmetics, candles, and fuel for oil lamps. They were hunted for their baleen, which was used as rigid boning in corsets. And they were hunted for their meat. This decimated their numbers. It's estimated that hundreds of thousands of humpback whales fell victim to this relentless exploitation. And by the 20th century, less than 500 were estimated to still be living in the world's oceans. However, as humanity became aware of the urgent need for conservation, a remarkable story of recovery unfolded. In 1982, the International Whaling Commission, or IWC, implemented a moratorium on commercial whaling, providing a lifeline to persecuted whale species, including the humpback. This global intervention brought an end to the relentless hunting, allowing the slow process of recovery to take hold. Protected areas and sanctuaries were established to provide vital refuge for the species. One notable example is the Hawaiian Islands Humpback Whale National Marine Sanctuary, encompassing nearly 3,400 square kilometers of critical habitat. These sanctuaries played a crucial role in protecting the whales during their breeding, calving, and feeding periods. With a ban on whaling and new marine reserves in place, the population rebound of humpback whales was nothing short of inspiring. In the waters of the North Pacific, the population has shown remarkable growth. It's estimated that before commercial whaling began, the species numbered around 15,000 individuals in the area. In recent years, the population has rebounded to even higher numbers, with an estimated 22,000 individuals in the North Pacific today. And their recovery has been impressive in other oceans as well. In addition to protective measures, increased public awareness has played a crucial role in the recovery of the species. Ecotourism, centered around responsible whale watching, has helped forge a connection between humans and humpback whales. It fosters appreciation and a sense of stewardship for these majestic beings, ensuring that their protection remains a priority. Nevertheless, challenges persist in their path to recovery. Climate change poses a threat to their habitat and food sources, and continued efforts are necessary to mitigate these impacts. 
Additionally, addressing other human activities such as fishing gear entanglement and vessel collisions is essential for ensuring the sustained rebound of humpback whale populations. But all things considered, the story of humpback whale recovery is a testament to the power of international conservation efforts. Through the collective determination of scientists, policymakers, and communities worldwide, we have witnessed the resilience of these gentle giants. By learning from the past and remaining committed to conservation, we can ensure a future where humpback whales thrive in the oceans that they call home. Rarotonga is the largest island of the Cook Islands in the South Pacific. The lush interior of the island is dominated by volcanic peaks and dense jungles. 88 species of bird call the island home, seven of which are endemic, meaning that they live nowhere else on Earth. One of those birds is the Rarotonga monarch. The Rarotonga monarch is a small species of flycatcher, and it's unique in several ways. For one, it's the only species of bird that undergoes sequential changes in plumage as it grows. It starts off orange and changes to gray around the age of four. It's also an oddly long-lived bird for its size. Nearly 90% of the birds survive into adulthood, with most living from seven to nine years. But it is known to have a maximum lifespan of 24 years. With the arrival of humans on Rarotonga, deforestation and land development resulted in the destruction of much of the bird's natural habitat. The loss of native forests greatly impacted the availability of suitable nesting sites and food sources for the species. But things started to get really bad with the introduction of invasive predators, such as rats and feral cats. They posed a significant threat to the Rarotonga monarch, as they preyed upon the birds and their eggs. As a result, the species population plummeted to alarmingly low levels, and by the 1990s, there were fewer than 30 birds left on the island. Recognizing the critical status of the Rarotonga monarch, conservationists took action. Efforts were initiated to save this unique bird from disappearing forever. They started by trying to restore and protect the native forests of Rarotonga which serve as the species' primary habitat. Reforestation initiatives and invasive species control programs were implemented to restore the environment to a habitable space for the birds. By restoring their habitat, nesting sites became available and food stocks were covered. To combat the threat of invasive predators, intensive predator control measures were introduced. Rat eradication programs, such as the use of traps and poison bait stations, were implemented to reduce predation pressure on the birds. By mitigating the impact of invasive predators, the survival rate of the birds and its breeding success were significantly improved. Captive breeding efforts were also established to safeguard the species from their immediate threat of extinction. Breeding pairs were carefully managed to ensure genetic diversity and the production of healthy offspring. Once the habitat was restored and threats reduced, the captive bred birds were reintroduced into the wild. But perhaps most important for conservation initiatives was the raising of public awareness. In order for restoration projects to work, conservationists needed the backing of local communities. Educational campaigns and community engagement programs aimed to instill a sense of pride and responsibility among locals encouraging them to participate in efforts to protect this endangered species. The Rarotonga monarch has experienced a remarkable recovery. From the brink of extinction, the population of this charismatic bird was estimated to be at over 700 individuals in 2022, which is 23 times higher than their population in the 90s, offering hope for its long-term survival. Described in 1801, the American alligator is one of only two living alligator species in the world, with the other being the Chinese alligator. Only found in the southern U.S., from Texas to Florida, this massive reptile regularly reaches lengths in excess of three and a half meters, 
with the largest recorded specimen being a male that measured 5.84 meters in length. Beginning in the 1800s, the species was hunted indiscriminately, mainly for its skin. Alligator leather was used in the production of shoes, boots, and saddles. By the 1860s, it was at the height of fashion in the U.S. Fast forward one century to the 1960s, and 90% of the American alligator population had been wiped out. Substantial efforts were undertaken to protect and conserve the American alligator. In 1967, the species was listed as endangered under the Endangered Species Preservation Act and was among the first species to ever be listed as endangered in the United States. This move provided legal protection and made it illegal to hunt or harm alligators without proper permits. In order to ensure its recovery, the wetlands and marshes where the alligators lived needed to first be protected. Essential ecosystems were identified and conserved through the establishment of national wildlife refuges, state parks, and protected areas. But what could be done about the demand for alligator leather for fashion? In order to alleviate pressure on wild populations, alligator farming became a sustainable source of alligator skins and meat. But they weren't just bred for commercial purposes. Facilities with captive breeding programs focused on hatching alligators in order to also release them into the wild. Through awareness campaigns that highlighted the vital role alligators play in maintaining healthy ecosystems and the need for coexistence between humans and these reptiles, public perception shifted, leading to a greater appreciation for their ecological significance. The combined impact of these conservation initiatives brought the American alligator from as low as an estimated few thousand individuals in the 1960s to an estimated millions of animals thriving in the wild across their range today. Once limited to certain southern states of the U.S., alligators have recolonized many parts of their historic range, even extending into areas where they were previously absent. The resurgence of the alligator has reaffirmed its critical ecological role. Alligators create and maintain wetland habitats through their nesting and feeding behaviors, benefiting numerous other species that rely on these habitats for survival. The American alligator's journey from the brink of extinction to a thriving population showcases the power of conservation efforts. By enacting protective measures, we've witnessed the recovery of one of America's largest reptiles to the point where they're a common sight within much of their range today. For millennia, the southern white rhino has roamed the savannas and grasslands of southern Africa in significant numbers. There are two recognized subspecies of white rhino, the southern and the northern white rhinos, though some recent genetic testing suggests that they should be considered two separate species. They are differentiated by the shapes of their teeth and skulls, as well as the amount of hair they have, with the southern white rhino being hairier. Their large size and peaceful nature made them a prominent species in the region. But the 19th century witnessed a catastrophic decline in southern white rhino populations due to rampant poaching for their horns. Demand for rhino horn fueled by erroneous beliefs in its medicinal properties and status as a luxury item led to an increase in illegal hunting. In ancient Chinese medicine, rhino horn is used to treat fever, rheumatism, gout, and other disorders. Being one of the eight precious treasures of China, it was also believed to be able to detect poison by fizzing in its presence. And so, many cups were made out of rhino horns for wealthy buyers. By the end of the 19th century, the rhinos were believed to have gone extinct. But less than a hundred individuals were discovered still living in a reserve in the province of KwaZulu-Natal in eastern South Africa. But the extinction of the species seemed imminent. Conservation efforts began immediately. Over the coming decades, the rhino's numbers slowly rose. In the 1970s, the species was listed as endangered, and concerted conservation efforts were initiated. Increased anti-poaching patrols and surveillance aimed to combat illegal hunting. 
collaboration among law enforcement agencies, park rangers, and local communities helped bolster protection efforts on the ground. Governments around the world implemented bans on the international trade in rhino horn, aiming to reduce demand and disrupt illegal markets. Captive breeding programs were established to safeguard the remaining rhinos and ensure their genetic diversity. These programs played a crucial role in preserving the species and providing a foundation for population recovery. Once numbers began to increase, southern white rhinos were relocated to well-protected reserves and national parks to provide secure habitats and minimize the risk of poaching. Range management and habitat restoration programs ensured suitable environment for their survival. Tourism and education have also played a key role in the protection of the species. Responsible ecotourism initiatives have generated significant economic benefits for local communities, and education programs have helped dispel myths surrounding rhino horn and have fostered appreciation for the species. From 1992 to 2012, the population of southern white rhinos grew dramatically. And today, the population of southern white rhinos sits at around 20,000, with about 670 of those being found in zoos across the world. However, with increased demand for horns, primarily in Vietnam and China, a massive uptick in poaching was seen beginning in 2013, with hundreds, sometimes thousands of rhinos being killed annually for their horns. In 2018, the Chinese government reversed its ban on the domestic trade of rhino horns and tiger bones. This allows traditional medical practitioners to use the horns in their medicine again, and the majority of doctors surveyed in China were in favor of this move. So, while the southern white rhino has shown remarkable recovery, it still faces persistent threats such as poaching and habitat loss. Continued conservation efforts are essential to secure the future of this species. The giant panda is a strange species. It falls into the order Carnivora and has the teeth of a carnivore. Yet its diet consists 99% of bamboo shoots and leaves. They spend about 12 hours a day eating in order to get all the nutrients they need from their limited diet. They defecate up to 100 times a day. They don't hibernate. And females are only fertile between March and May, and only for two or three days within that window. Today, the species has found international popularity because of its unique appearance and endearing demeanor. The story of the giant panda is one of resilience, as it faced a perilous decline and became an international symbol of human conservation efforts. The giant panda is historically found mainly in southeast China, as well as small parts of northern Myanmar and Vietnam. But today, it's limited to a few mountain ranges in south-central China, in Sichuan, Shanxi, and Gansu provinces. It has long faced challenges due to habitat loss and fragmentation, with their specialized diet of bamboo, the panda's survival hinges on the availability of bamboo forests in the mountains of China. The species has always been considered rare, but as the population of China exploded after World War II, humans began to expand into the panda's habitat. Logging, agriculture, and infrastructure development led to the panda's habitat being broken into small, disjointed pockets. As a result, the giant panda's range dwindled, and its population became isolated and fragmented. By the 1970s, there were believed to be only a few hundred individuals left in the wild. This dire situation raised concerns about the species' survival, and prompted extensive efforts to protect and restore the species and its habitat. First, the Chinese government established a network of protected areas and nature reserves. Next. In order to reconnect the fragmented forests, reforestation projects and bamboo planting initiatives were put into place, allowing wild pandas to move freely through their range once again. The conservation of the giant panda received significant support from local communities as well as the international community. People across the globe donated to help fund the conservation of this species, 
and international zoos and scientists contributed to the knowledge we now have about the species requirements, especially for breeding. By 2013, the number of wild pandas had increased to over 1,800 individuals, and it has sustained that number ever since. In recognition of the species recovery, the IUCN downlisted the giant panda from endangered to vulnerable, marking a massive success for international conservation efforts. And that's it for today's video. What other animals do you know of that have come back from the brink? And would you maybe be interested in a part two of this video? I want to thank my patrons, Kasha, Lael, and April, as well as my newest patron, Colby. Thank you all so much for supporting my channel. And if you want to see more content like this, consider supporting me on Patreon. Just follow the link in the video description below. Soon, it will only be my patrons who will have a say in what content I make next. Another way you can support my channel is by liking this video, commenting, and subscribing. I'm actually shocked at how many new subscribers I have gotten this week, and I'm very grateful for all of you. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.